So the remaining two components are this, which is a TVS transient suppression diode. It's a 33CA. Now this doesn't have a cathode marker because it doesn't actually have a cathode. It's two diodes back to back and they sort of zen at that 33 volt voltage. Uh, now I want to bend this with the 33 at the top so that you can see it. Yeah, it's a bit OCD. So that will go across those outer pins there. Ah, but not until I've put um, a wire, a piece of wire going across the two ground pins in the center there, which is what my cables are going to connect onto. And in fact, what I could do is sit this down fairly flat. It's going to sit up a little bit because it will sit on top of that piece of wire. And I think I'm going to borrow that piece of wire that I need uh, as one of these legs. So let's chop that off. So that's the, the bit of wire that my cables are going to connect to. This can come back out. And I will bend this piece of wire pretty much down the center and fit it across those two center ground positions. And that'll present two connection points on the back where my wires will connect. The other two, yeah, that always happens, doesn't it? A little sliver of uh, solder comes off the coating of this wire when you push it through. Uh, the other wires, which I connect to, are drain and source of the MOSFET. So I'll solder that in. The MOSFET actually sits out beyond the edge of the board. And my other two wires connect to that. So I think, actually, I want to bend these legs right flat against the body of the MOSFET so that when that sits on there it sits as far in as I can. Now, I could grind off that tab, it's not needed because the idea of this charge controller limiting it to 5 amps or 6 amps was that it would never get hot enough that it would require a heat sink but equally grinding that tab off would probably be very mechanically disruptive and it might damage the component and it's not really necessary, so I'll leave it on. So the two black wires, the negatives, connect to these two uh, bits of wire that I'm just soldering in now. This is just this loop of wire. Is that hot? Yeah, just about. So let's get that soldered in. Like so. Not cut those off, of course, because they are my connection points for the wires. Now let's get the TVS diode in there. That's the TVS diode in. I can snip off the other leg. I might hang on to that to make another loop for the next charge controller. Okay, final component that goes in is the MOSFET. That sits in there like that. Let's get those legs soldered. Right, the MOSFET is soldered in. Now I know the gate is on the uh, left side as you look at it from the front. So I can snip off the gate connection, which is that one. But the remaining two drain and source need to stay on. And then these become the connection points for my wires. So yellow and red go to uh, these two. Yellow actually can come up that way. Red goes down because that will be battery side. I need a ground also going down, which can be that middle one. Yeah, it looks like I thought about this. And then this ground goes that way, which is the ground side by side with the red. So red for battery, black for battery. And on this side, it's solar panel. No, battery is the source of the MOSFET, so red, black, and then drain, which is the center pin, is yellow, and then that will be black. Yeah, so time to get my wires on, I think. Well, actually, I think it might be worth just stopping for a moment and having a look at this, because it's really quite a splendid thing. It's very tiny, mixes a lot of 
very tiny components, which are low current, obviously, with the high current components, which are the MOSFET. The TVS, I suppose, is high current if there's a transient. It's only there if there's kind of an induced voltage, high voltage from, I don't know, a, a lightning strike some distance away, obviously not a direct hit, and it'll take that out and protect the um, MOSFET primarily, I think. Or is it everything else? I can't quite remember. So I need to tin these four wires and get my nice high current, well, I think they're about 14 amp cables on there, so let's do that now. So that's gone into sleep again. Uh, so I want to get a fair amount of um, solder on these. I think I might turn it that way actually, get that out of the way. Oh, so I just bent the MOSFET away from the board. That's not what I wanted to do. So let's get some solder on these and I want a little sort of hanging solder blob like so. Yeah, that looks perfect. And a close-up of that, you can see that I've tinned those four connection points and just got a little bit of a blob of solder on each one. I'll do the same with the wires and then they'll go on nice and securely. So time to tin all these. I really must set this time out longer because it just keeps going. Oh, can't quite reach. Just keeps going to sleep. Right, let's uh, tin these. And I want, like I say, a little hanging blob on there. Oops, there's a bit of muck on there. Oh, I can't do it with all four in my hand. And this black one. Yes, I seem to remember these black ones just didn't take the solder quite as well. Don't know why, maybe something is coated the copper. And another black one. This charge controller is common ground. Some charge controllers are common on the positive because it's easier to do the um, drive the MOSFET that way. But I wanted this to be common ground because that's what you'd expect that the two grounds are connected together and on here they are by that loop of wire that you saw me uh, put onto the board. Right, let's start attaching these cables to their mounting points. So this is the first one. And I just lie it on there, run it across. And we've got a solder bridge to the adjacent wire point. So the idea is here that I haven't got a third hand, so I wanted enough solder on the wire and on the leg that I didn't need to add any solder. And it kind of works. And you just run that up and down. Oh, that slipped to the side really want that on the top. Quite hard to do. And now some bits of heat shrink, which I can slide on the ends here. Uh, right, okay, this is going to mean I have to use my hot air gun in a slightly different way. Oh, well, maybe not, because I normally put it in there. I can still do that, put the whole thing in there, can't I? Okay, let's try it. See if I can shrink those two up. I can't get round to all sides of them, but... Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so that's the solar input on. Now let's put the battery wires on, which will be red and black. Okay, my red and black wires are soldered on. Let's have a close look at that. So that's the battery input to the circuit. Well, it's an input in the sense that it powers the circuit, but it's an output in the sense that the solar panel coming in on yellow charges the battery. So yeah, for most of the current, it's flowing out of the red wire. And that's essentially it. Now it's gonna have UV glue as a conformal coating. 
as I say, it will fit in that waterproof box as well. So the conformal coating won't do anything uh, particularly important. The waterproof box will have um, apertures at the bottom so that any water that collects inside the unit can drain out. Well, let's just do another test with the 12 volt battery uh, where we can see the LED. That's now on the front on the V2. So that looks up to then. I've got to be careful the yellow and black don't short at this point. This is only batteries, so it probably wouldn't be a disaster. There's the blue light. That should now go into show the voltage mode. Well, it shows the voltage all the time. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, possibly even eight. Yeah, it's indicating the voltage of the battery. Cool. So the charge controller is going in this box and I want solar cable coming up, two of them, one either side and then they'll just sit there, perhaps put a piece of chocolate block there and my solar inputs, the yellow and black on the charge controller will just loop over the top and attach onto those connections. Then red and black wires will go through two smaller holes so I need to drill four holes in here, two that take the diameter of this. Let's just check what that is. Uh, just over five. So if I drill a six mil hole, and all these holes will be a loose fit for the wire so that they act as drain holes. And if any water accumulates in the bottom, temperature changes throughout the day and night. As during the day, the temperature in here uh, will increase, the pressure will increase and push the water out of the bottom. During the night, uh, the temperature will decrease and suck water up through the bottom, but of course that's going against gravity. So the net result will be any water that accumulates will get pushed out during the day. So these things should stay relatively dry. The electronics needs to sit a little bit up away from any potential pool of water. So I'm just gonna drill four holes, um, two six mil, two three mil, which take the um, red and black wires. Yeah, let's do that. Not too concerned about the precise positioning of these, but and I'm using a, a wood brad drill to keep the center neat. So it's about there. Well, they're not bad. And now let's get a six mil and do the two outer holes. So these, oh, I've got to avoid the internal pillar there. So let's try and get as close to the edge as possible. Yeah, these drills have rusted a bit. <laughs> I think they've lost their sharpness. Okay, how close am I to the internal pillar? Yeah, that's about right. One more hole, which will go about there, I guess. Well, that's not bad at all, if I say so myself. So yeah, the two big black solar wires, which will have uh, MC4s on the other end, so the solar panel will connect to there, and the two little wires in there. I like that. Not sure how long these should be, so I'll probably keep them this length. I found this piece. Here's another piece which is longer, so I'll cut it to the same length. Uh, and I'm going to stop these falling down by just putting small cable ties inside. Now I just went into the office to solder uh, some 8mm ring terminals on the ends of those wires. So that sits in there like that with the LED facing forwards. Now I need to get these fat cables through these holes like that. And then I'll work out, probably just chocolate block, 
a double chocolate block which I'll cut into two singles but uh, yeah I've got to thread these through through you go and I've put a cable tie near the end so that'll sit in there most of the space inside here is actually taken up with the interface between my little thin wires here and my thick solar wires well so be it that's proving very tricky and there's one other issue I've uh, just noticed and that is that my wires come out red to the right but on the battery that sits just below this box uh, positive is actually on the left so these wires let's just get that all the way in there's no easy way to do that is there um, yeah, these two wires will have to cross over and connect to the battery down there like that. But essentially that's how it's going to go. So it's the usual problem when you've got big chunky things attached to tiny delicate things. If these wires get moved, I'm going to impart forces on this thing, which I don't really want to do because it's very delicate. So I did think actually there are a couple of mounting points down here. P clips attached to the cable and screwed into there would work. I mean, yes, I could just hot glue these in, I suppose. Um, but I don't have any P clips. But then I thought I do have some cable ties. So if I put the cable tie around and leave a little bit poking out, drill a hole in it and put a screw in there, that might work. Well, it's not what I had in mind, but it kind of works. It's a bit of cut off cable tie. And then I'll drill two holes at that pitch, which just about seems to be right. And then the one I've done, it's kind of cable tie fashioned P clip, but it works because I can waggle that and it doesn't really have any impact on the position of that. So yeah, I'm quite happy with my cable tie P clip and now now I want that biased forwards really rather than biased back but the position's about right I'm just going to cut these yellow and black wires whoops that's now moved so that they're the right length to fit in the other side of these two chocolate blocks and those grippers work really well because no amount of movement there really has any effect here. It's rather good. And now slide this back down and tuck these in here. And like I say, I really want the charge controller biased forwards so it sits forward against the clear plastic front. Why won't that go in? It will. Okay, and I can't really see what I'm doing. We'll have to stop the camera and move it out of the way. Yes, that looks pretty good. I think that's everything done. So yeah, that sits pointing forwards, reasonably square. There's the LED. But as you can see, most of what's in here is connectors, but those are nice and firm now. So I've got these coming up to the right. I'm not sure whether that's going to be ideal for the solar panel. We will find out. Right, time to put the screws back in the case because I think that's pretty much it. The only thing I will do, um, if I get round to it, once my UV glue arrives, I want to douse this thing in UV glue. But it should be all right without a conformal coating just sitting inside this box. I've just noticed that the little gap in the sort of foam beading is at the top which is not ideal so I'm going to relay that so that it's at the bottom. Oh no need because the uh, piece of beading is in the front glass I didn't realize that so I just need to turn that round so that the gap sits at the bottom. That's better. Right just need some MC4 connectors on the end of these two cables and I'm pretty certain that when you see that on a solar panel because it's got the red ring doesn't mean pos but that is the pos one in fact there's a positive there is there a negative on this one yeah there is however on here 
it will go into that. So I need to put that on the positive. So that one needs to go on the one with the yellow wire. Okay, I think that's done. This thing's sitting in its box. Uh, I've got MC4 connectors on the two big solar cables and on the red and black here I've got my eight millimeter ring terminals which go on the studs on the battery. So I think it's ready to install. Uh, it does look like it's raining now. Oh well. And uh, finally here it is in situ, that panel on the right cables into the charge controller. I'll put my shadow on it. Yep, that's modulating away merrily and that's connected down to the studs on the battery. So that should give me some more power. And then when I build two more of these controllers and I get two more boxes, I can mount one above that battery. This one seems to be behaving a bit better now. I kind of reconnected it, disconnected it and reconnected it. Or is it? Oh, it is modulating, yeah. The camera doesn't really show that very well, but it is modulating. And this one, of course, has no connection between the panel and the battery as yet. But it will get one. Cheerio.